this is David Harper, the Bionic Turtle, with an illustration of an exotic option called the Exchange Option. An important type of option, and to understand it, we can compare it to a regular old option, uh, like a stock option, where if here V denotes the price of the underlying asset, maybe a stock, and if we think about a European call option, as the holder of the European call option, we're hoping that the price of the asset at expiration has risen above the strike price here denoted by K. So in a plain vanilla option, it really is an exchange option because as the holder of the option, we are paying the strike price. We're exchanging the strike price and we're getting back the underlying asset, the stock here, V. So the exchange option is a general case of this because instead of a fixed strike price, what we have instead is another asset. So now when we purchase or are granted the exchange option, what we have is, I'm going to put this in back, the right to exchange option U and get back option V, or if you like, we're going to pay U as the strike price and get back V, the underlying asset. That means instead of a fixed strike price, we have a strike price that will change over time and is the price of asset U. Now, so we have two assets and these can be any number of things. This could be the option to exchange for example, US dollars for British pound sterlings. So this could be a currency exchange option. In the case of an executive stock option, Warren Buffett has argued that those executive stock options ought to be indexed to the S&P 500. Well, that would be a type of exchange option, option because instead of a fixed strike price, the price for company shares would be indexed to the S&P 500. So we can substitute any number of things in here for an asset that we're going to pay and get back in exchange the underlying asset here, V. So now if we go forward in time, say, to T1, and our underlying asset V drops in price, but asset U increases in price, we're going to be underwater here. It's going to make no sense for us to exchange U and get back something cheaper. But maybe if we wait longer, the price of asset U will decrease and the price of the underlying asset V will increase such that if we get to time T2 here we can exercise the exchange option. We can pay the price of asset U and in return for that get back the asset V and so we're profiting from the difference here and so you can see the key difference with the exchange option is we have two paths to consider the price of the asset we're going to get back in exchange and instead of a fixed strike price the price of the asset that we're going to be paying and so the payoff for the exchange option is the maximum of zero as an option we're not going to have negative value and the difference between the price of asset V and the price of asset U here at time T. In terms of a formula, it turns out we can use a straightforward variation on the Black-Scholes called the Margrab formula. Here is the formula. It's got D1 and D2 and those are broken out here. If you have any experience with the Black-Scholes, you might recognize this as very familiar because this is really just a variation on the Black-Scholes with three replacements. What used to be the strike price here is replaced with the price of that benchmark asset that we called U, and we replace the risk-free or riskless rate with the dividend yield on the benchmark asset here. That means you'll notice the riskless rate has dropped out entirely from the McGraw option formula. And finally, we replace here the volatility with the volatility of the difference between the two assets. So those three changes, 
and we've got a sort of modified Black Scholes that will allow us using the this McGraw formula to price an exchange option. This is David Harper the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.